Hello, I'm Entrism and welcome to Let's Play Stellaris Banks Update Utopia DLC. So the Banks Update and the Utopia DLC are coming out in a few days time and they add a few different things including changes to government, changes to induce things like the Ascension perks and the Traditions tree and the ability to have a few new events here and there. We're going to dive in and we're going to be playing as the Penuri Conclave. So I was toying around the idea of playing maybe a hive mind species, but in the end I decided I wanted to play a species that could go for the psychic ending. So if we have quick edit, I'll show you the biggest change. So by the way, we're going to be playing as a venerable, talented, weak, sedentary, slow breeder race. Since we're going to be playing as basically a very spiritualist group, I decided that they'd probably be slow breeders considering they, well, they're basically all priests. Um, the sedentary, they don't tend to move around very much because I guess... They're the more sedentary type. They're more like monk-like priests as opposed to maybe, I don't know, like the Mormons that come to your door and knock on your door. Like, we don't do that unless we do it in our fleet. Then it's like, you know, the fleet of conversion. Where we're like, hello, do you want to uh, convert to our god? No, I will blow you up. Okay, cool, yep. Um, weak. I mean, they don't really spend much time, like, lifting, do they? Mostly, like, lifting Bibles or whatever. Um, talented. Because they spend their time in a lot of contemplation and stuff, and venerable because, well, I guess they venerate their elders and stuff, and they've figured out how to quite well extend their lifespan. Um, I don't know. I just wanted to play a race where we could have just lots and lots of old people, rather than having to be like, yep, we'll get a new leader. Yep, we'll get a new leader. And also we can get, like, high skill levels. Right. Uh, if we go to ethics and government... Here we have the change. See, the ethics, there's a bit of change here. You no longer have collective versus individualist. We have elegantarian versus authoritarian. So, like, dictatorshipy or imperial versus uh, democratic or oligarchic. And then we've got democratic, oligarchic, dictatorial, imperial, hive mind. You also have the hive mind ethics. So, if we were like to cancel our ethics, we could pick hive mind. And then the only authority we could have is Hive Mind. We don't really have a government, we have a Hive Mind. Uh, I won't be doing that because it does change how you play, and I want to kind of play around with a few new Ascension Paths, whereas Hive Mind is kind of a little bit more limited. Pretty cool, but limited. Uh, so we're going to be playing as a phonetically spiritual, elegatarian group, and we're going to be playing as a oligarchic one. So election every 40 to 50 years to set new ruler. Uh, the Civics. Now, like traits, you get these genetic traits that are basically how your species tends to grow or tends to be weak or tends to be strong. Civics are basically how your culture, how your government, how your society is strong or weak or whatever. Uh, we've got two to pick, and I picked Exalted Priesthood in any kind of sense. I mean, I'll be honest, Governing Ethics Attraction plus 20% is not the most powerful one here, in my view. But it kind of just made sense. So I picked it up on that basis. I mean, if you want stuff like you can get happiness, you could get um, monthly influence, empire energy generation 10%, corporate dominion, pretty tasty. Election influence cost minus 50%, the shadow council. Basically, that's like, in fact, you know, the democratic process isn't really a thing. It's actually this uh, council in the background controlling everything, basically lizard people. Uh, mining guilds, you get mineral production plus 10%. Like, these are quite useful. Aristotle uh, Elite, 4 lead capacity, government recruitment cost. That's really tempting. In fact, maybe we should have Aristotle. Maybe, instead of having, like, a proper priesthood. Hmm. Maybe we should have an aristocratic elite. Like, different houses based on the priesthood. Choose the leader capacity. Give us a much higher leader capacity. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I was just going to lead. I'm going to go Meritocracy, which is plus one skill level, plus one leader pool size, uh, because that will play in really nicely with our traits over there. So, I think we're ready to go. We'll be doing uh, a projectile weapon wormhole, because wormholes are the best. And we'll go for avian ship design. Sure. Done. Standard, standard. We're going to have one fallen empire. I don't want the war in heaven to trigger, because... I kind of want to play around the Ascension perks in the late game and not have to worry about the craziness of the war in heaven, which might, of course, happen. Uh, Empire placement, random rather than clustered. We're good to go. Puneri Conclave. In the eons since the first primitive Puneri communities took shape on the windy plains of Pan, a civilization has spread and prospered. 
as we progress through the technological ages, there were many religious amongst our people, uh, religions amongst our people that can tend with each other for the followers. Gradually, sometimes peacefully, and sometimes less so. The truth they found its way to all corners of the world, and the faithful were united under a single universal church. Now, after the successful creation of an artificial subspace wormhole, the finest minds of the Penuri Conclave have finished construction of the first wormhole station at the edge of the system. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp! Dun dun dun! Where are we in the galaxy? Okay, we're on the edge of the galaxy over here. Not a great starting location because the density of stars here is much lower. So my idea is to try and just run as quickly as possible in towards the interesting areas. Also, do we have a Tundra World here? So we tend to go for Tundra Worlds, our people. I kind of felt that that kind of plays into the whole spiritualist thing. You can't really go outside and play and declare war on people. You tend to stay inside in quiet contemplation. It made sense. In theory. Uh, we're going to pick... Ooh, solar panel network or power plant? I'm going to say power plant 2. Uh, we'll go for... We're going to go for Heritage Site. Heritage Site is a building that you get that produces uh, Unity. I will talk about Unity later when it becomes important. But for now, we're just going to go with that. Why? Why have we got a Voidcraft expert here? That said, improved space is an option. Sure, do that. That seems like a good idea. But why do we have a Voidcraft expert there? Hmm. Right. Build me another science ship. It's the, the default start, right? What you do is, before you even unpause, you quickly build a science ship. Survey the system. Construction ship. Get ready to go wherever you're needed. And now we'll unpause. So, the Petunomi Conclave are making their way out into the galaxy to convert people, to convince them that their way of life is the correct one. That their oligarchic, aristocratic priesthood is the way forwards. And hopefully we'll find uh, some interesting perks for the Ascension. I'm hoping that we'll get a nice, uh, what's it called? Psychic uh, phenomena kind of thing. Uh, some energy. Uh, not bad. Go with some energy. Science ship. Alright, let's recruit a new scientist. What do we have? No engineers, which is a shame. I was hoping we could get an engineer. Research speed, 10%. Ma maniacal. <gasps> ooh, 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 ooh. This, right, Spark of Genius 10% is really nice, but this one is a special ability. Uh, it massively increases the chance you'll discover psychic technologies. So we're definitely wanting to hire you. And then I would like to switch around what we're doing. So psychic technologies, I think, come under... Sociology? So I'll switch you onto there. And then I'll switch the spare one. To there. Right. Now, if you wouldn't mind, let's have a look at this system far away from our home. Also, let's look at our planet. Hello, planet. How are you doing? Right. We are slow breeders, by the way. Priests. What can you say? Uh, this population needs one unit of consumer goods every month at a cost of 0.45 minerals. Decent living standards. And a Gatarian, we need less. Okay, cool. So this is a new thing in banks, is that you have to manufacture consumer goods to make people happy. And that fluctuates up and down depending on some of the, effectively, the, the traits, the ticks of your population. Uh, egalitarian, for instance, is reducing that by 10%. So, we want to have a quick look around. You are getting built here on the food and that. The food will help buff our growth rates. So that's probably a good idea. Yeah. I'll actually clear this tile blocker. So that we've got more energy available if we need it. That said, for now, really suffering for minerals. Lots of energy, no minerals. A four energy world. You know what, I'll grab that. Tile blocker cleared. Discovery of alien wife. Wife? Alien wife? Yes, we've discovered an alien wife. Uh, today, my voice is completely off. I think hay fever is starting to kick in and I'm getting a sore throat. So if I'm uh, a little bit stumbling with my words, I apologize. The DSV, the Divine uh, Space Vessel, by the way, if you want to know what DSV stands for. 
Tarala, the graceful, has made a startling find on Farin Malba 3. The planet's teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we've encountered life forms that did not originate on Pan. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believed we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Farin Malba 3 are sentient, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. We may not be alone out here. Dun dun dun! Carry on. The Priesthood of Pan had a generally favorable reaction to reports of complex yet dumb organisms found on alien planets. The findings did spark some interdoctrinal debate. Is this proof that the penury are the lords of all creation? Or have we simply not yet encountered our brethren from beyond the void? Dun dun dun! Oh, minerals! We need that. Construction ship, when you're done, come over here and build. System survey complete. Okay. Uh, feel free to start surveying around. Really good start for energy, but System kind of want complete. minerals. Okay, you're done over there. Feel free to jump a little bit further away. Oh, I love wormholes. Wormholes are so good. I mean, right now we have to always jump back to our home system, so that's the only wormhole station we have. But we'll work on it. Now, while we're waiting for something to pop up, Couple of changes. Firstly, you notice up here that we have food! Normally it isn't in the top bar. Banks update. You now have a galactic food supply. So instead of being able to just have food on one planet and not being able to trade it between planets and having like a starvation happening right next door and yet be like, no, can't send you any food. Why not? Food doesn't go through space. It doesn't? No. Food stays on a planet. You can't transport it? No. No, it's impossible. You can now actually have a galactic food supply and if you have a planet that doesn't produce food, fine. You ship food there, which makes sense. Dear God, I love that change. Uh, we've finished the construction of a mining station. Okay, good for you. So yeah, we can now transport food, which is brilliant. We finally figured out how to make tin cans. Ooh, transmission coming from somewhere deep inside the atmosphere. A gas giant. Could it be someone or something trying to communicate? Research that. That sounds interesting. Ooh, five minerals. Oh, it's in two different places. Okay. And we have enough minerals now, I believe, to build another mineral station. Go for it. Now, another pretty nice change that I have to admit I like is that we can actually build a colony ship from the get-go at the moment. It used to be the case that you had to research for that. Ooh. We picked up curious readings from Obeltus 2. The significant pox of radiation in the gas giant's atmosphere that appeared to be the result of intense bombardment. What someone could hope to gain by bombing a gas giant from orbit remains a mystery, however. As the Dorland Tyrant was praying to break orbit, Science Officer Rapalkin recovered a weak signal coming from the planet's interior. It may be a transmission of some kind, but the gas giant's background radiation makes it difficult to isolate. We should investigate this signal. Situation log updated. Okay, um, I guess you should immediately research the signal just in case it tends to have a time limit. Let's find out what that's about. Meanwhile, the Armada's sitting there. System survey complete. Everyone else is cool. Hello. Explorer, expansionist. Construction complete. Situation log. Science chip build cost and anomaly research speed. That's nice. Encounter. We encountered some alien vessels in Elgor system. Dun dun dun. Ooh, some sort of space station. News of alien ships humming through the ether have reached Pan. In many ways, ending the first chapter in the book of the Punic Conclave's bid for a stellar empire. No, it's too early to end the first episode. Uh, we are going to contact the Mello. Let's research that. Finishes in 10 months. Very well. Right. Now, we could, like, start building a... Uh, colony ship very, uh, very early on. Like, we could just save up now. The issue is we wouldn't really be able to support Special the development of the colony. Complete. I see this and I go, oh no, end game event! And it sends like a shudder through me. Every time. They started using this for other events now, but uh, every time I see this I'm like, oh god, end game event! No, it's okay. Woo! Science officer! Rapalakin has managed to isolate the weak signal that was coming from somewhere deep inside the atmosphere. It does appear to be a transmission, and we filtered it through our translation software. On screen. Finally! Well met, spacefarer! 
We are the Daphnak, and the planet you're orbiting is Talokrong, our ancestral homeworld. It is always riveting to meet a solid, even if our last encounter with your kind was somewhat problematic. You've no doubt detected the radiation surges coming from our atmosphere. Talokrong is dying, and our species will perish unless we find a new home. We've identified a planet that would suit our physiology, but we've no means to get there. Sadly, our non-corporeal nature means we don't have much in the way of industry or technology. Will you help us? If you've no technology, how are we speaking? <laughs> ah, but you're not the first solid to pay us a visit. Another spacefarer graciously donated a small subspace transmitter and a scanner array to us three million solar cycles ago. They'd been designed to be compatible with our physiology. One of the more positive encounters we've had with your kind. What happened to your planet? Well, the last solids visited us a few thousand cycles ago. Things didn't go well. They wanted us to embrace their religion. We refused, and this triggered some kind of genocidal reaction. Completely unwarranted. Before we knew what was happening, they maneuvering their fleet into orbit and unleashed a massive orbital bombardment. Um, I mean, you did refuse someone else's religion, so maybe this is an opportunity for us to get in on the ground floor of a new species. You're the first species to really talk to us. We can't, we can't refuse. We've got to try and help. And maybe at the same time we could, like, distribute flyers. The Divine will save you. Your immortal soul is going to be forfeit if you don't. Might be hard for you to hold the flyers since you're incorporeal, but we'll work that out. We'll be relocated. Situation log Excellent. I knew we could count on you. The coordinates of our new homeworld have been forwarded. You must promise not to let your colonists claim this alluring world before we get there, no matter how strong the temptation. Okay, uh, where are we going for this then? Track on map. Hmm. Okay, we're gonna have to take you off mission right now and get you to come here immediately. I'm not gonna do the research project yet. I wanna check out the system before we do that. Because there's limited time on this mission. Yeah, two years. What could you possibly have over here? Okay, so there's a gas giant, some other stuff. Ooh! Okay, so let's talk about Unity. Unity is a new resource. Basically, unlike influence, which influence is... Your big empire, you have a lot of influence. You're a small country, you don't really have that much influence, in theory. Uh, Unity is more like how united your people are behind your ideals. Uh, Unity allows you to get a load of cool perks. So if we click traditions available, you can buy traditions with it. If you've played Civilization, you'll recognize this. It's like the ability to spend culture in Civilization to get like upgrades and stuff. And it has some stuff about being able to grow for expansionist, diplomatic, researchy, um, harmony, which is kind of a more, I think it's a more people just passive. Yeah, okay. So yeah, people don't like rebel as much. Prosperity, which is more about resources, dominate uh, dominion, which is more about, I guess, sub subjugation, uh, getting vassals to like you, and expansion, which is the ability to basically expand your empire without taking too much of a hit. Now, unity has a penalty. The larger you grow your empire, the more expensive unity becomes. Expansion tends to offset that a fair amount. So if we have a quick look through, and I'll just do a demonstration. If we pop over to, say, dominion, by adopting it, which costs you a point, Subjugate wars reduced by 25% for the war goal. Uh, if we finish it, any technology that another party does not have... Um, any technology that another party does not have will receive a 50% speed bonus in addition when unlocking a sentient perk. Ah, between our subjects. So our subjects will get technology from us. Um, and also we get an ascension perk slot. So by finishing each tree, you get an ascension perk slot. These can then buy ascension perks. We're going to be going for the uh, end game of being really psychic and awesome, because spiritualist. And we're going to try and end up with Mind of Matter and Transcendence. This basically allows you to unlock the psychic abilities. The first psychic technology is still in the game, but all the psychic technologies after the first psychic technology in the game are no longer there if you have the DLC. If you, do have the DLC, if you don't have the DLC, then they'll be there in the game as normal. But if you have the DLC for Unity, uh, Utopia, you'll be able to get... Mind of a Matter, and then Transcendence, which allows you to start becoming psychic, and all people start getting these little psychic abilities, turning up on leaders. Transcendence, everyone gets it, everyone becomes psychic, and then you start to be able to contact the Shroud, which is like this 
otherworldly dimension where you can barter with basically spirits or entities over there. There are also other stuff like, you know, Interstellar Dominion, Border Range plus 25, Technology Ascendancy plus 10% research speed. Those are pretty nice. These are pretty major buffs. 10% research speed is a pretty major buff, so uh, those are pretty cool. I think our first pick, quite honestly, is going to be expansion because new colony start of one additional population is pretty strong. And adopting, especially when we've got slow breeze speed, and adopting all blah 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 will increase our core systems by two, which is quite nice. And of course, we can pick up stuff like colonization fever, capital builders now produce one additional unity. Um, the effect of increased tradition cost by number of colonies is reduced, so more colonies normally makes traditions more expensive. This will reduce that cost a little bit. Population growth time reduced by 10%, colony development speed increased by 50. That's great as well, since we uh, tend to breed pretty slowly. So we're going to go in expansion. The first tier increase in the number of population that we can get from a colony ship from one to two. System survey complete. How long do we have left on this mission for the incorporeal beings? A year and a half. The system actually doesn't appear to be that interesting, so I'm probably going to be project fine. Ooh, communication established. United Dorbolan nations. Diplomatic channels are now open. Theocratic Republic, evangelizing zealots. Fanatic xenophobe, spiritualist. Oh dear. They're not going to like us. I come with a message from the Reverend Elder Yargim Den Polshok, the elected leader of the United Demolition Nations. We believe in the right of all sentient beings to fulfill their individual spiritual needs and will brook no alien interference in this matter. Yeah, fanatic xenophobe. This is going to be interesting. Very early on contact. Um, may the spirits guide you to your goals. News that we've encountered Tangent's life for the first time has been received with mixed feelings by our populace. This confirms what we'd already suspected. We're not alone in the galaxy. Each new alien species we encounter represents both an opportunity and a threat. We must be wary. These particular Xenos have a level of technology similar to our own, indicating that they can uh, they achieved a space site roughly at the same time. This changes everything. And instantly border closed. Oh dear, they're an advanced start nation. Who do not like us. Oh dear. Okay, um We're gonna need to play very differently now. Ah, uh, this is not the best start! Quickly build a Corvette. Build two Corvettes. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, I'm gonna line up that research project. And then you know, that research project as well. Sure, we found an interesting asteroid. Cool. Too stale for its friends to be a natural occurrence. Toad asteroid. Interesting. Someone towed the asteroid there a long time ago, presumably the purpose of mining it or something. I paraphrase. I've seen that event way too many times. How long have we got? Less than a year. Okay, at least we're coming back to do it now. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing apart from that free energy. So, I've... Uh, not for energy, sorry. Three engineering. I feel fine with giving this to them. Let's transport them over. Right, construction ship. Let's get a bit more energy. Got another tundra world over here. Uh, this one's slightly better. But it doesn't actually grow us in the right direction. And how are we doing over here? Have we managed to... Oh, yes, we have managed to start popping people out. Let's build a... Mining network here. How's the relocation going? 67%? Nice. Research complete. Power plant 2? Lovely. New research. Deflectors. I mean, I love administrative AI. The bonus is nice, but I want deflectors because that will really help our military. And we need it. Special project. Complete. Equivalent fleet, equivalent navy, superior technology. Science officer has finished supervising relocation to the new homeworld. Convoy of civilian freighters equipped with massive pressurized gas tanks. Uh, ferries the gaseous beings across space and deposits them in the gas giant's atmosphere. The ancient transmitter and scanner array were also brought along. 
We are forever in your debt. This planet has exceeded our expectations for the first time in generations. Our yang can frolic in the atmosphere without starting to glow. We've decided to call our new home Baldurak after your species. Future generations of Dathnak will always know the name of their saviors. Baldurak? We are Pinuri. Really? I could have sworn. Apologies, but it can be difficult to tell you solids apart. Racist. I'm afraid it's too late to change the name now. It's a nice ring to it, though, don't you think? I am unhappy. I was nice for no reason. I got no material gain out of being nice. Right. Let's do some science. <sighs> Construction complete. Okay, I do feel we're probably going to need to attack you early on. The technology level is superior, but their fleet and naval capacity are equivalent. So if we can try and build ourselves up for an early fight with them before they have the chance to go much further. System survey complete. Construction complete. Right, you finish your construction queue. Excellent. Let's upgrade. How much are you going to cost to upgrade? I did not look. Probably should have looked. That was probably very expensive. 90. Eh, not too bad. But 90 for one energy. There are better deals out there. Research complete. Like this. Four energy for the same. Can I cancel that? There we go. Right. Construction ship. Oh, you're not within our borders yet. Ah, you're so close! Move there. Heritage site. This is a building that actually gains you unity. Symbol of unity. Ooh. It's rare. Let's do it. Produces two unity and a planetary happiness modifier of plus 5%. Not bad. Not Another bad indeed. Found. The Bree Field, of which... J00 is part of rolls and swells on the influence of unknown forces. Go for it. Let us end this charade. They've declared us as a rival. Yeah, I was hoping to try and avoid that, but now they've declared us a rival. I think the gloves are off. And they're very close to boxing us in. That's very close spawn. Very close. We've got to turn this into advantage. If we can capture their, like, infrastructure, great. Build me a Corvette. Um, yes, I want to declare your arrival. 0.8 influence. Sure. You know what? Let's actually go a bit more than that. Build another Corvette as well. Upon inspection, the asteroid is found to be silent. One of the assistants eventually confessed they may have misread the instruments. Aww. Fail. Come on! Just slight border pop. So close. Should probably start saving for a colony ship as well. Do we need a colony ship if we take their worlds from them? It's debatable. Construction complete. Mm, tempting. Right. Uh, let's give you a leader. Oh, let's save the leader of combat. If you just sit around, there's a chance you'll become like boring and stuff or whatever. There's some negative traits that you might get, so let's leave that for now. You keep doing your sciencing. I think we're going to need to build a forward complete. jump station over here. So, put a wormhole station. That allows us to start actually exploring a bit further this way. Since we're trapped over here. Hi! Anomaly United Dobble Nations, girl. A small rectangular object on the surface is reflecting all scanning beams like a mirror. 
research it. Still equivalent. You know what? Might be time to use a frontier outpost. While connect surface scans, science officer Lintel and the crew of the Terrania discovered that what appeared to be an artificially carved slab of rock covered in alien writing. It's the Edstone. <gasps> they have not detected any sign of alien activity on the moon. And exactly how this mural came to be is a mystery. We've prepared a special mission to translate the text. Situation okay. Log updated. Oh, you need to be in orbit? Okay, uh... Research. Survey system. I think we're going to have to build a frontier outpost. We need to get landing quick. Construction complete. It's a bit of an expensive job, but uh, we're kind of a little bit locked in over here. Traditions. Right, we could get this, which is capital building now produces one additional unity. Frontier outpost system now count as being half the regular distance away for the purpose of colonization and building. Eh. Hmm. Mining station build costs reduced by 33%. Happiness increased 10%. I mean, it's quite tempting to go for something like the, uh, just adopting this. Mining, mining station build costs reduced by 33%. That will have such an impact on our early game. Especially since we haven't managed to set up our second building yet. You know what? I will grab it. It's probably a bad idea to diversify this early on. But that discount is really going to help. Like a lot. Alright. How's it going? Frontier outpost System being built. Survey complete. System survey done. Science ship. Do me some science. Use that new jump gate. Start sightseeing the crap out of everything you see. Special project complete. They managed to partially translate the alien mural discovered on Phonus. It is a memorial for an extinct alien race that once maintained a small interstellar empire in this region of the galaxy. They are apparently exterminated by the creators of the mural, a fact they seem to regret. Given the mural has been dated to excess of 300 million years ago, it's likely the critters are also extinct by now. Perhaps the most interesting of all is the material the mural is made of. Despite its age, it's remarkably good condition. Amazing. Experience some engineering research. And you've gained a level. Oh, sweet. Comet sighted. <gasps> a light was seen moving in the dark sky of Pan. Its gentle arc, standing in stark contrast to the slow revolution of the stars. The citizens of the Pan see its proof of recognition by the powers that be, and a subtle blessing of, of our cause. We get happiness plus 10% for a year. Yay! Comet sighted is a good thing. Take that, EU4. Oh, but you're not doing a science. You should do a science. Right, I think the next is a colony ship. We've got enough energy that we can afford to do it. We've encountered the presence of a primitive alien civilization on Pan in the Higuma system. Later stages of Bronze Age, having mastered early metalworking. Although most of the population is rural, several large city states have formed. Okay, interesting. Research complete. There we go, that's Corvette. Uh, coil gun. Yeah, we need to be ready for war, so getting upgrade to our weapon systems would be very nice. Anomaly found. Impressive structures, practically begging for some archaeological work. Do it. And we're moving our way up towards colony ships. It'll take a while. Ooh. 
Higma is uninhabitable and indeed uninhabitable. Yeah, is uninhabited and indeed uninhabitable, but not unvisited. Its surface is littered with tall cenographs carved from some mineral not native to the planet, only placed here by some artistically inclined spacefaring race. The one that's thrown lines definitely chart a history so fantastical it must sure be fictional. Surely. We either gain some engineering research or they are beautiful. Make digital reproduction of the monoliths widely available in the Empire. I think we should. It might be a sign from the Lord. Like our, our divine might have sent these for us. The annotated reproduction of the monolith found proof immensely popular to the Pyrenean Conclave. Many citizens state the fanatical annals have completely changed how they feel about aliens. Three pops gain the xenophile enic, uh, ethic. That's completely pointless to her, really, let's be honest. But sure. Construction complete. Beautiful. I'm not going to start building stuff just yet because I need to set up for that colony ship. Anomaly found. Oh. Rhythmic movement on the head surface of Hickma 1. Research it. Alright, let's get our colony ship going. Geothermal. Ooh. We gain a load of energy credits. Wow, that is a lot of energy credits. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And we've got... <gasps> Hickma 1 also has five engineering. Oh my god, I want that. That would be amazing. That would double our engineering output nearly. If I could just get some minerals, that'd be great. Survey complete. Debris I'm field rolls and swirls under the influence of unknown forces. Feel free to have a look at that. How are you? Still equivalent. Gain the trait paranoid. That is unfortunate. Oh dear. Sometimes you've got to be paranoid. Dimensional pocket. Ooh. The Grace have now made it all the way to study the anomaly surrounding it. The ship, along with science officer Lintel and crew, blinked out of existence as it was navigating the debris field, and then it reappeared minutes later. Lintel reports they found themselves briefly in some extra-dimensional space. External viewports revealed they were surrounded by countless ships of alien design, suspended in a seemingly endless void. Before the crew could get their bearings, the vision abruptly faded and they found themselves back in regular space. However, roughly half the crew are missing. Science officer Lintel speculates that they have been selectively trapped by some unknowable mechanism in that strange space. Dun dun dun! System survey complete. Okay, so we've been kidnapped by aliens. The missing members have reappeared. They held us from aboard an unknown vessel not entirely similar to our own science ships, idling close to where the DSV Graceful originally experienced the dimensional disturbance. They claim to remember nothing of the time outside our dimension aside from a vague awareness of having been away for some time. They wish for nothing but to return to service under Science Officer Lintel and intend to surrender their ship to the Penurian authorities. Yeah, very well, sure. Free science ship. Let's recruit someone. Ah, they're all people who've like... <gasps> Ooh, new wells. Uh, no one has got like an experience in uh, like anomalies or anomaly decrease time or Scanning? No? Fine. Okay, I guess we'll go for someone who's... I mean, you have a 10% research speed, Spark of Genius, so we'll go for you, since you're applicable all around. Let's train you up. Right, your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to join in the many, many survey teams we have going on. Construction ship. Go over to this and build a mining station. And we'll have to continue to try and spread out. And count the influence! Of the Dorbolan Dorbolan Nation? The Dorbolan Nation. It's like the Fire Research Nation, but worse. Complete. Deflectors. Beautiful. Fusion. Improved deflectors. Really nice. I'm going to go for Fusion because it's a little bit quicker to do. And we should go to the ship designer. Chuck some deflectors on. There we go. Save that. An upgrade. How much it cost to upgrade? More than we have, but it'll be worth it. Actually, having deflectors on our ships is going to severely increase the survivability. The First League. We've recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization. If what we've learned from the artifacts is correct, this civilization was some sort of confederation that consisted of many different alien races. They called themselves the First League and appeared to have coexisted in relative peace for some two million years ago. 
Though Le Zumon system lies in the region space that appears to have made up the core of the territory, partial map found amongst the artifacts indicate that the first league may have eventually covered a significant portion of our galaxy before it's a collapse. Okay. Interesting. Situation so that's our precursor event chain that we now have. Hmm. Huh. Well, hopefully we'll find some more of the artifacts. This is probably a good place to end the episode for now. Uh, I might release two episodes today since it's a, a new thing, depending on how my voice holds up since it is feeling kind of scratchy at the moment. But uh, if you've liked, like, and not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Feel free to comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking of Utopia so far. Let me know what you think that the uh, Canary Conclave is that we managed to do in this galaxy with someone so close breathing down their neck. I'm hoping that we'll be able to overrun them, grab their land and their infrastructure, and use that for a nice bump at the beginning. But uh, right now, it's not looking particularly great. Um, that has certainly slowed us down. It's decreased our options in an area where there's not particularly a dense area of stars. Limited us, pushed us back. I've even had to use a uh, Frontier Outpost, and I very rarely set them up. If you've seen my series before, you know I hardly ever use them. So that's a sign of how bad it has got. Until next time, though, I've been Andrew Elysium. This has been Stellaris Utopia and Banks. And stay shiny.